In today's video, a reverse sleeper with some voodoo magic. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to take a look at some uh, retro PC goodness. And behind the door we can get a feel of what's going on. This is what's called a reverse sleeper. We have a modern case with uh, retro components in it. This is an Anoxia case, which was decommissioned uh, about a year ago or so. And uh, we decided to repurpose it with this uh, Athlon system. So yeah, pretty nice uh, little case. We have uh, some sound deadening here. We have some sound deadening in the side panels as well. This case is optimized for noise. And that fits perfectly with a uh, old screaming retro system. So you can have the best of both worlds, both the retro experience as well as some nice peace and quiet. So yeah, the stickers on the front are a little bit of a dead giveaway what's in here. Obviously we have 3DFX inside and an AMD Athlon, but more about that in a little bit. First of all, let's take a look at the back of the machine. You can see we have a nice cooling fan here, 120 millimeters, I believe. Power supply in here is just a generic unit that had enough uh, 5 volt power to uh, and 12 volt power to power the system. It's been working fine for years and it looks a bit sketchy, but it's honestly a pretty good unit. Motherboard, we can see the overall layout. It is a little bit more modern than you would expect from an Athlon uh, Voodoo combination. We have PS2 ports, serial, parallel, VGA, four USB, two ports, Ethernet, and onboard audio, which has been disabled, obviously. We have three sets of ports with VGA on it. This is the main video card, a 3D card, uh, or primary 3D card, but you know, it's a Radeon 9000 Pro. I'm still looking for some solutions there. More about that uh, later in the video. Uh, we have two cards here. These are both the Voodoo 2 12 megabyte cards. They're not matched, so they're a little bit iffy sometimes, but they seem to work fine. And the bottom card is a Sound Blaster Audigy. I can't remember the exact model. I think it is a 2ZS, but uh, we can see that later in the video again when we power the system up. If you can't tell, it's been a while since I built this system. It's been sitting around uh, for a long time, uh, me not being very motivated to make videos about it. And I think today is the uh, right day to uh, finally go ahead and go back in here and see what's what. All right, so this is the side view. We've taken the side panel off. Don't mind the cable cutter. Again, this is a work in progress and we have some small issues that I will address later. Um, yeah. So you can definitely tell that this is not a regular Athlon system or an Athlon XP. This is actually an Athlon 64. This uses the Socket 754 platform with the VIA chipset, the K8M800, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it supports HP 8X, which is occupied by the Radio 9000 Pro, which I think is actually an HP 4X card. Not that it matters much. And uh, here we have the two uh, Voodoo 2 cards with the SLI bridge. And here is the Sound Blaster card with a CD audio cable going up to the optical drive. This case did not originally uh, have provisionings for a floppy drive, so I ordered a five and a quarter to three and a half inch adapter bracket that could fit a floppy drive. Installed that, so we have the full retro experience. We have uh, behind here some uh, SATA connections. They are not occupied. SATA on this platform under Windows 98 SE is iffy as all heck, so it's not worth de dealing with. So we're just running a regular old IDE mechanical hard drive, might as well. I do have an optional SSD that I might use with a converter on this uh, once I get it absolutely spot on running, which it's not. Again, <laughs> later, uh, something more about uh, that. We have one RAM stick, 512 megabytes, I believe PC 2700 or DDR400, either one. I think this is a DDR400 stick actually, so PC 3200. CPU is an Athlon 64 3400+, 2.4 GHz. Very nice CPU, one of the best ones you can get on this platform. And uh, a very, very decent performer. And uh, like I alluded to earlier, it is running Windows 98 SE. Or I installed Millennium on it, if I'm a masochist, but you know, we'll find that out in a little bit. Let's get the system uh, put back together and uh, we'll turn it on and see what it does. All right, ready to Power right on. Says when I click on that power button. There we go. 
You can see Athlon 64, 3400 plus, 512 megabytes of RAM. It's running in single channel because Socket 754 does not support dual channel memory operation. Now we need to make sure the image is right. Let's do an auto adjust here. There we go. Much better. Let's go to system information. It has the latest BIOS from 2005. And uh, yeah, everything appears to be detected, so let's discard and boot into the operating system. Now we can also see whether I chose Torture or Windows 98. I think I built the system in November or December of last year. And didn't manage to shut it down properly, so we got scan disk. But it's only Windows ME, so we chose Torture. All right. I don't think I plugged in audio, actually. Does that work? No, that it doesn't. All right, we're right back. All right, technical issues aside, we now finally have sound. Will they play it? There we go. Yep. Got a whole bunch of games installed in here. And, uh, it's displaying properly. We're connected through the Voodoo cards. Go to Device Manager. You can see we have a high-tech Excalibur Radeon 9000. I'm using the 3FX Zone Fast Voodoo 2 4.6 drivers on this particular set of SLI cards because that's the only driver I found that was actually stable enough to play games. So that's good. We have the 3DFX Voodoo 2 1000 video settings here. Judging by the fact that this actually loads means that the glide operation is working properly. Let's go to advanced here. Scanner interleaving, interleaving can be disabled here, which is actually now enabled. It should be here as well. Scanner interleave detected. It does do some glitchy stuff, so I'm guessing either one or both cards are, have some faultiness in them. Because as soon as you've run a glide application, it's better to just reboot Windows and if you want to uh, do some more because it's uh, it's a bit glitchy. But uh, we'll show that in a little bit. One of my favorite things to show in terms of glide games is actually Nitro Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. We can go here to the 3D device setup which will detect our graphics cards. We can choose a direct 3D device 1 which is our Radeon 9000. We can choose our Voodoo's, or we can choose software rendering. We'll use the Voodoo's. Of course, we need to load a CD-ROM. Let's see if, if the network is up. I don't think I have this particular folder set up yet. So we'll have to find that out. Oh, that's working. Okay. Good. See if it allows a network browser, or else we'll just have to create a nope, it will not. We'll have to create a shortcut. That's fine. 10.4.86.13. Uh, it's actually now this share. Changed around a little bit. Something on my old retro file share. It's only accessible in the retro PC VLAN, which is VLAN 486. Thought that was a good name. Here we have a couple of games that we've collected over the years. Need for Speed is over here. Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. Open the Q file. This is actually a personal copy. I have this game on CD, so while I've sailed the seven seas for many of the games on the share, this one is actually original. And there we go. We'll go for hometown just because it's an easy race. 
show off the graphical capabilities of the 3DFX Voodoo 2 SLI setup. It should run pretty well. There we go. Three, two, I've tested this game with both uh, single Voodoo 1 operation and SLI. I first started off with just a single Voodoo 2, and then the SLI itch started to uh, need some scratching, so I ended up buying a second one, which is uh, unmatched, but still a 12 megabyte card. It's not optimal, but it sort of works. You get these fancy little effects in glide mode that you don't get in a 3D uh, direct 3D version, such as the fog and those uh, lights that you just saw when we went uh, through that little uh, bridge there. And now I'm totally fucking up because I'm talking and driving at the same time, which you should never do. But anyway. There's just little bits of uh, glide-specific features in this game. Some special lighting effects and shadows that you don't get in Direct 3D. Makes the game look quite a bit different, actually. If you see them side by side, there's definitely some things that uh, stand out on the Glide version. It really looked like Glide was going to be the future when it came out, but... Management of 3D effects made that, uh, that never happened. Alright, so that's enough of that. Not just my shoddy driving, but let's not make this video 27 hours long. So that's definitely a Glide native title. We also have another Glide native title, which is Unreal Tournament, which I've set up to run in Glide. This game is a little bit iffy sometimes. This was actually the game that I tested for stability the most, because it, it seemed to be the most sensitive to the Glide drivers working or not. So we'll see if uh, it, it plays ball today. As it turns out, it does. Right, so here, any preferences, you can see we're running 800 by 600 resolution at 16-bit color, because the Voodoo 2 cannot do 32-bit. Glide for Windows is running. Do some uh, facing worlds, because it's the law. And again, do some adjustment here. Noticing that black bar on the left, that's just annoying. There we go. Damn. I think this is the Chaos UT mod installed. Yep, definitely is. Let's just fire the Redeemer off in the distance there. Oh, that's a good result. This game runs beautifully on here, by the way. Oh, beautifully. It's not bad. That's always nice. This is a game, by the way, that definitely requires Voodoo SLI. This game runs pretty terribly on a single Voodoo 2. Let's actually pause the game, I think. What was the command again? Let's show FPS or something? No, I can't actually remember. Just had it in my head. And, uh, well... Doesn't matter. There we go. On a tournament. Runs a while on here. In fact, what we could do is run a short little benchmark hop there. If I'm not mistaken, you can enable the time demo here. Uh, 
Let's see if that holds up. There we go. Red leader, you got point. Here we can see what the frame rate actually is over in game. Should give you an idea. It's completely V-synced at the moment, it turns out. So it should be capable of going higher. That's an 800 by 600, which is not bad. Alright, so let's move into the area where it's typically a lot uh, heavier to run, especially when you get over the hill here. You can see the average starting to drop. Drops to about 40 FPS there. That's still perfectly playable. On a single card, it would completely bog down there. There we go, let's fire that down. So yeah, that's facing worlds there. Running at around 40 to 60 FPS on Voodoo 2 SLI. Which is definitely a decent experience. Another game that is interesting for a couple of reasons is Half-Life 1, because it's one of those games that sort of supported Glide, but not quite. I don't think I have it on here, I think I, I, think I still have it on a, on a disc somewhere. I know I do, never ripped it. Let's see if it will run without. As it turns out, Half-Life does not want to run. And this is what I meant by it sort of glitches out after you've run the Glide application. And the best way to get around this is to just reboot the system. So I'm going to do that. Then we'll do one more thing. Talk about some of the uh, other issues and then uh, we'll end the video there. Gotta love that creative intro. So yeah, the last thing I wanted to show is actually Return to Castle Wolfenstein, which I'm not sure if I ha still have that installed on here. I do. Because this is one of those interesting games. It supports both uh, 3D FX cards in OpenGL uh, Glide mode. Sort of a mixture there. 3D FX, OpenGL or whatever. And it also supports Direct 3D. This is what it looks like uh, when you run the game on Voodoo 2 SLI. Voodoo 2 SLI is not supported, by the way, at, uh, well, the Voodoo 2 in general is not supported in this game. I suppose what we could do is go all the way down. It's actually set to 16-bit. Oh, that's never going to work. So I'll set this all to high settings, but keep it at 16-bit, 644.80. And then we'll go to driver info and then I'll show you what I mean. I had it actually will uh, run in glide mode. So we're in glide mode, I believe, now at the lower settings. Here we can see Vendor is 3D FX Interactive, 3D FX Voodoo, pixel format color 16 bit. I have a power, more powerful 3D card in this system. I cannot make it choose uh, between the cards. Like we saw before with Need for Speed 3, we have the option to set the default uh, 3D card uh, to use for the game. You can choose between the powerful 3D card, Radeon 9000, and the Voodoo 2 SLI set. We cannot do that in Return to Castle Wolfenstein. It will always, by default, grab the Voodoo 2. I guess if you rebooted the system and just plugged in the VGA cable straight into the, uh, into the Radeon, it would probably work. I haven't actually tested that, but uh, yeah, it's very weird like that. I guess the Voodoo doesn't want to play ball anymore at the moment. Didn't have this crashing issue before. So we could also just try Quake 3 Arena. I think we've just uh, caused a complete system crash. Yep. 
Look at the pretty colors. So yeah, this is what I'm dealing with. <laughs> These cars are 100% stable in SLI mode. I've tested them individually and they don't give any issues at all. As soon as I enable SLI, this is sort of what happens every now and then. So yeah, I guess that concludes this video. If you have some pointers for me to look in which direction to uh, take the system and make it uh, more stable again. Also some recommended 3DFX Voodoo uh, to custom drivers that might be more stable. Uh, leave a comment below. I'll uh, see what I can do. Maybe we can do a follow-up video on it. Uh, seeing if that uh, changed things. Hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.